Hey, I'm back. I'm Charlie Craven, and today I'm going to tie for you a fly called an iris caddis. Uh, this comes from Craig Matthews in uh, uh, sort of a, a crippled caddis emerger pattern. Um, had, had a few requests for this one. Um, super simple little fly um, in, uh, you know, kind of true to, to most of Craig's patterns. Um, a really simple kind of guide style fly that's that's quick and easy to tie, doesn't use a lot of materials. Um, but man, sure sure does work. Um, and this fly can be fished, uh, you know, under or on top. Uh, so it could be fished as a nymph or an emerger or up on the surface. Um, and uh, I've made a uh, just a one material alteration uh, from the original that in that rather than Zelon for the shuck and tail, uh, I'm going to use the uh, polypropylene macrame yarn that I've become so fond of because it uh, um, does all the things that I want it to do. Uh, just floats better, it creates a little bit more surface area. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, it's a pretty tough little material. But this is a simple fly. So um, we're going to start off with... Uh, 100, Tiemco 100 SPBL size 16, which is my kind of usual dry fly hook. Get him in there. And I've got some 14 knot brown Vivas. And I'm going to start this thread just up, you know, an eye length or so behind the eye. I'm going to make a thread base all the way back to the bend. And for the shock, what I'm going to use is this is just some dark tan um, colored macrame yarn um, and what I'll do here is I'm going to tie this in um, you can see that end is sort of ragged I actually like that I'm going to ragged it up um, I'll show you a couple different ways to do this um, let's show you this way so if you've just got a square cut end like so I can tie this in and I'm going to come forward over that butt end trying to keep it on top of the hook back up to about where I started the thread and then that piece was sort of twisted together but if I can get it separated um, I don't like that real square cut um, end on that shuck um, so to rag it up a bit what I'm going to do is come in at an angle with my scissors and kind of cut a long angle across the top and the bottom it's okay to have you know a couple of long ones in there um, but what I really want to try to avoid, and you can see I'm just kind of going at it from either angle, shooting for something about a shank length long, um, just rag that up a bit so it's not quite so um, so rigid and square. <clears throat> um, the alternative to that is just use that ragged end and tie that end so you end up with the same thing. Um, and as you tie, they'll, one end will get a little more ragged than the other, and you can use that without even having to trim it. I'm going to cut that off. Um, and one thing I always kind of think of on shucks is they imitate an empty nymphal husk, um, you know, hanging off the back of the of the adult bug as it crawls out. Um, so they should be lighter colored and pretty sparse. Um, you know, it's easy to easy to overdo them. So you want a pretty sparse, um, not too much material in there. So now I'm going to take um, for caddis. I'm I'm a huge fan of just plain old hair's mask stubbing, um, and this is from the pole, the center part of the mask. Um, so I'm going to take some. Some dark hairs masks here, mask here, and I'm gonna dub this on my thread fairly thin. You know, I always like to put my even the coarser dubbings. I like to put it on thin, um, you know, relative uh, to the hook size. But um, I just feel like I can control the taper and the shape a lot better if I have a thin strand versus a fat strand. Um, and then also we are gonna pick this out a little bit when we're all said and done. Um, and I find if you don't put it on fairly tightly to begin with, uh, when you go to pick it out, you lose so much of it that the fly doesn't look like what you thought it was going to look like. So I'm going to use that bare thread to work back. So I get my first turn of dubbing back here, right at the base of that shuck. And then I'm going to start to work forward. And I want to dub right up to, you know, an eye length or so back. And then I'll start to build a little bit of a taper. About like so. I like kind of a square shoulder there. Um, and you can see I've got just a little bit of dubbing left. Um, I, I have a couple options here. I can either pull that little piece off or knowing what I'm about to do, I can I could dub right up to the eye and then just come back over that. Um, I can bury that little piece. Um, depending on your propensity to crowd the hook eye, um, that may influence how you want to go about that. 
but just as a as a commercial tire I don't always have to pull that off I kind of know where to put it and um, you know that's a that's a big key on dubbing is people ask how do you always know uh, the exact right amount of dubbing to put on there and I the answer is I don't um, you know I can get pretty close um, but what I do know how to do is is place that dubbing and where to put it so that it uh, kind of blends in or disappears um, and kind of completes the taper so now for the wing on this fly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a slightly thicker strand of that dark tan macrame yarn, and I'm going to loop it over. And I just loop that around my scissor blades to make a little loop like this. Um, now, you've got a couple options on this fly. You can make this with a pretty short little wing. You can make it with a longer wing. There's, you know, a lot of variables in between. And I do tie them, um, you know, kind of all of those ways. So I'm going to make this one a little longer. But what I do want is you can see how that loop is open through the middle there. Um, you want that loop horizontal like that. So I'm going to lay that in. Just measure it back to about the bend of the hook. And I'll tie that down with several tight turns like so, and then I can come in and trim those butt ends out. If you kind of flatten that wing down a bit, that'll kind of spread out like so. Then I'm going to take another little pinch of that same dubbing. Like I said, this is a simple one. You know, everybody uh, gets all excited about the you know the complicated flies myself included I like I like complicated flies I like flies that are that are compelling to tie um, but I have to tell you you know some of these guide patterns um, you know simple as they are there's just beauty in that simplicity um, you know it takes it takes a, a lot to end up with a little um, a lot of design goes into uh, just that clean simple uh, way of going about things and, and this is one of those and um, you know Craig's got a lot of them the sparkle done gosh you know that's a, a fly that that works everywhere all the time and uh, you know is a super simple fly two three materials so so I put a little bit more dubbing on here and and I've got most of my bulk already here because I've got the tie down and then I also had a little bit of dubbing under that but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this dubbing just up behind the hook eye and I want to dub up the hill up to the base of the wing and I can even overlap the base of the wing a bit and fatten that head up a fair bit and as I run out of dubbing I'll end up right behind the hook eye so you want to kind of overdo that head a bit like I said we're going to pick this out so uh, we want to kind of build in a little extra and I'll whip finish my thread and you can see how buggy this hair's your hair's mask dubbing is um, and this is hair's mask from uh, hair's mask dubbing from a hair's mask um, not from a package the stuff in the package is just not the same thing um, so I like the hair's mask from the from the from the actual mask so now I'm going to use a piece of velcro and I'm going to pick this dubbing out and you might lose a few strands oh, lost my velcro um, might lose a few strands of the wing we can just peel those out I'm going to pick that dubbing out so that I've got a pretty shaggy body. Um, and one of the cool things, you know, I, I, I say this about a lot of different flies. Um, one of the cool things about a fly like this is it's malleable, um, meaning I can kind of change the profile. See, I can kind of pinch that wing down. Um, I can even push it down around the body. Um, you know, and this is this is handy if you've got a fish that comes up and eats your fly and you miss him, um, or he comes up and inspects the fly and, and refuses it. Um, a fly like this, you can sort of change the profile. I could stand, you know, on the next cast, I could stand this wing up a little bit more um, and, and give it a little bit different profile. You see how that can have a few different effects on, on what we're trying to do here. I'm going to pick this other side out a bit. And I like that shaggy, ragged, just dirty sloppy body like that and that is our our iris caddis um, dirty little bug um, but man that does that is a working fly um, and again it's one of those cool flies you know it's a great fly to fish behind another dry and uh, what I like to do with that is I'll you know I'll grease it and, and let it fish dry but if it sinks um, I just fish it out uh, they'll eat it under the surface, especially if it's an inch under the surface, like a caddis emerger starting to come up, um, or just getting uh, just getting to the surface, I should say. Um, that's a fly that uh, that will do the job in that spot. And you can, you know, obviously alternate colors however you need to. But uh, that is Craig Matthews Iris caddis, cool, cool, cool bug. Um, you know, one that's uh, maybe not as popular as it used to be. You know, it's kind of been overshadowed by by so many of the new new flies, um, but that doesn't mean it doesn't work anymore. Um,
go find out for yourself. Hope you enjoyed that. That's an ugly one, but uh, it becomes much prettier when it's stuck in a trout's mouth. You guys take care. Thanks for watching. I'm Charlie Craven.